Welcome to ATEX Quick Start video series. In this series, each upload will feature one of our trainers and some basic operations for you as the instructor or for one of your students. So now's the time to go ahead and get your operations manual out and let's get started. In today's upload, we're gonna be featuring model 811C. This is our starting systems trainer. This trainer was designed to introduce your students into the basic principles of starting systems and starting system diagnostics. So if you wanna go ahead and open up the page eight of the operations manual, it's gonna be a complete tutorial of all the parts and pieces that make up this trainer. So turn to that page and we'll go through everything one at a time. When reviewing your trainer orientation, most ATEC trainers are set up with color codes. Our input components on this trainer are labeled in blue, including our ignition switch and our park neutral position switch. Our engine control components are in green, that includes the engine control module and the body control module as pictured here in the middle. On the left hand side, you'll find the output components. They're all featured in red, including everything that's in the fuse block, the start relay, the run crank relay, and the starter motor itself. Now that we've had a brief orientation of the parts and pieces on the front of our trainer, let's talk about a few things that are necessary to start this unit up. First of all, the ATEC starting system trainer does require the use of a lead acid battery. This is about 650 cold cranking amps here. Along with having a lead acid battery, you do want to go ahead and get yourself some heavy gauge cabling. We recommend the length of about four foot to allow you some room to move the battery back and forth or anywhere that's necessary. And then once you've got your battery all hooked up and your cable ends all nice and tight, make sure to plug in your 120 volt power supply which this unit here will turn it into a DC voltage that the trainer can use. The trainer does require both the use of the lead acid battery and the 120 volt outlet here plugged in in order to make the unit fire up and start. Now that our source power is completely hooked up, it's time to start the trainer. The first step after all your wires are hooked up is use this toggle switch in the bottom right hand corner to go ahead and supply power to the entire trainer. And you'll know that the system's on when the red LED is lit below. <clears throat> up top here, you'll find the user interface panel and you will want to wait. If your unit is connected with CMP, it will prompt you to enter your student ID number. If it is not connected to CMP, it will default into fault entry mode only. Once the screen says fault code up here, you're ready to begin. You can start with the ignition key right here and you're going to turn it one notch to the side. That goes into the accessory. We're gonna turn it one more time. That's gonna put us in run mode and we're going to wanna to ensure that the green light where it says start is completely illuminated here. And then once we're in the run position, we're ready to go ahead and turn this over to initiate the starter. Let's take a closer look at some of the parts and pieces on the face of the trainer. If you'll notice, you'll see these little red, blue, and black tip jack points. These are for using your lead ends for your digital multimeter, and they plug directly into each of these units for taking proper measurements. Now, as we know, if we're going to take a resistance measurement of a component, we must disconnect or isolate that component from the system. In order to isolate a component completely on an ATEC trainer, you use these little toggle switches here on the side. And when they're in the up position, there's an image here that shows that that connector is completely connected. If you flip this down, then that separates the connector just as if you were to unplug it from, uh, you know, just like you did on the car right here. So before you get going and before you start doing any diagnostics on your trainer, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that all of these toggle switches are in the up and connected uh, position. Otherwise you might end up with the wrong answer. We have one last thing to cover before you can begin your student activities on the starting system trainer. There is a <clears throat> service information note on page 15 in the operations manual that covers a mistake that the General Motors wiring diagram uh, has as far as pinouts of one of the um, start crank relays. 
It is important that you as the instructor and that your students read this section on page 15 very carefully and very thoroughly. Otherwise, during the diagnostic process, you might end up with the wrong answer. So please uh, go ahead and review this section and make notes, especially on bullet point number three, about the testing and the different test points that you need to be utilizing to get the correct answer. Well, thanks for hanging in there with us today as we went over our quick start guide for our starting system trainer. We hope you learned a lot and find some valuable information to share with your students or maybe you've learned as, as an instructor yourself. If you would like to get further training on this particular unit or any of our ATEC equipment, we do offer free in-house training two days a month. Check out our website atechtraining.com in order to get more details. And again, don't forget to check out our other videos on YouTube, like and subscribe, and please also check out our Facebook or LinkedIn social media accounts. Thanks and have a great day.